is on. Okay, everybody take a nice big deep breath and let it all go. I am here only to be truly helpful. I am here to represent him who sent me. I do not have to worry about what to say or what to do because he who sent me will direct me. I am content to be wherever he wishes, knowing he goes there with me. I will be healed as I let him teach me to heal. Amen. All right. So last week we talked a little bit about Easter, Jesus, the crucifixion, the resurrection, and um, I have this chart where we show Jesus. I think I'm too far away. Let me pull that in a little bit closer. I don't feel the mm. All right, so that on this side of the chart, which is the ego side um, and our normal way of looking at the chart, and this side would be the Holy Spirit side. And if we align with, with guilt, sin, and fear, attack, differences, I'm an innocent victim, um, the life and the body, um, and I believe the crucifixion is real, I am going to be aligned with the ego versus being aligned with the Holy Spirit, where I would have resurrection, eternal life, my alignment with the mind, nothing happened, truth, spirit, love, the same, and instead of an innocent victim, I would truly be aligned with my innocence of who I am as God created me. So as you can see, it's extremely different one side versus the other side. And as the course often speaks of it, is they are mutually exclusive, meaning nowhere can you be in both of these two places at the same time. You may go back and forth and back and forth, but you would not be able to be in, in both places at one time, which is exactly what the ego loves to do. It loves to kind of try to bring... God or the Holy Spirit are in, into the world, and the Course is very adamant about the idea that that's an impossibility. You can't be in the world and be in your mind at the same time. So we're going to explore a couple of the areas in the Course where it talks about uh, the crucifixion and resurrection, and I also actually picked out a number of quotes in areas where it talked about the idea of the thorns, because we know in when Jesus was crucified, they put the crown of thorns on his head. So that was a significant symbol in the process of the story of Jesus, according to Christianity and the, the story of the crucifixion and resurrection from the perspective of the course is actually quite different in the respect that the purpose of the mm -hmm. crucifixion was to have the resurrection, the resurrection being the overcoming of your belief and separation. So we're going to turn to text 52, paragraph two. <laughs> Excuse me. And we talked a little bit about this first line last week in another uh, context. <clears throat> okay, the journey to the cross should be the last useless journey. Do not dwell upon it, but dismiss it as accomplished. Page 52. Yeah, I think it was text text 52, paragraph three. Does that not work? Oh, yeah. paragraph three. Oh, sorry find it okay perfect right after paragraph. yeah i know <laughs> did i say to if i did I mean, yeah well, who knows <laughs> all right so the journey to the cross should be the last useless journey you must needed to hear that one again do not dwell upon it but dismiss it as accomplished if you can accept it as your own last useless journey you are also free to join my resurrection until you do so your life is indeed wasted it merely reenacts the separation, the loss of power, the futile attempts of the ego at reparation, and finally, the crucifixion of the body or death. Such repetitions are endless until they are voluntarily given up. 
do not make the pathetic error of clinging to the old rugged cross. The only message of the crucifixion is that you can overcome the cross. Until then, you are free to crucify yourself as often as you choose. This is not the gospel I intended to offer you. We have another journey to undertake, and if you will read these lessons carefully, they will help you prepare to undertake it. All right, so that's a little paragraph chock full of a lot of concepts. So first of all, the journey to the cross should be the last useless journey. So Jesus is trying to help us understand that this demonstration of you know, going through the process of the cross and the crucifixion and everything is a useless journey. It was only to take us to the resurrection. And at the same time, how many of us are constantly going back on the journey? Poor me, I'm an innocent victim. How dare this happen to me? And so and so and so. And, you know, we worked with this chart a couple of weeks ago, but literally anytime we're playing over in the bubble of the ego or the bubble of the dream or the bubble of insanity, we're saying crucifixion, get those nails out, get that crown out or the crown of thorns, because this is who I am and I am an innocent victim and somebody better do something different so that I'll be okay. And the Course keeps trying to remind us this is a choice that was made. The results of that choice are going to be the left-hand side of the chart, guilt, sin, and fear, suffering and pain, judgment and attack. And if you want it healed, you don't sit in here and try to figure out how to solve the problem. You go back to the cause, which was choosing this, and you make another choice, which is choosing to align with the Holy Spirit. But as we'll read further on, mm -hmm. we can't be in both places at the same time. I can't bring my my miserable, I'm an innocent victim story and come to this door and get in. It doesn't work that way. This door is only an empty mind that is living in the moment that has no story to be brought in. Then we can align with what the Holy Spirit's story is. So when he's saying a useless journey, he's saying as long as you're playing in here, guys, it's a useless journey that is never going to take you anywhere but into the recycling of the old story that is not going to take you to the truth of who you are. It says, do not dwell upon it but dismiss it as accomplished. Okay, why would he say that? And what that means is you now can come to recognize having the effects of this choice and becoming aware of what they are isn't the answer I'm looking for anymore. You know, again, we made this choice because we wanted to be an individual, special, and different. That was the gift we were looking for when we ordered this package from Amazon. The package has arrived. The course is now saying, take that package, examine that package, and see what it's bringing for you. Is it bringing you suffering and pain and guilt, sin, fear, attack, judgment, I'm an innocent victim? Then you want to send that package back, if indeed you really want just peace. Okay, but and it was so much of the course is about examining what the effects of having chosen the ego are and the effects of cho having chosen the ego are not all that hot. Yes, I get to be an individual special and different, but with it comes the package of all the misery that most of us live through 99% of our day. Um, this is what we're being asked to observe and become aware of. Is that what I want to keep doing? And when he says, but dismiss it as accomplished, okay, I figured out this was not a good choice. I'm going back to my Amazon store and I'm going to order this other package because the Holy Spirit keeps telling me this package is a way better package than the one that we have ordered. If you can accept it as your own last useless journey, you are also free to join my resurrection. Because again, if I'm choosing over here, I'm choosing for resurrection instead of feeding a crucifixion. Every moment I have this choice. Until you do so, your life is indeed wasted. And <laughs> this is a um, you know, Jesus is pretty honest in some paragraphs, but this one, I think he goes overboard. <laughs> so your life indeed is wasted. If you just keep recycling in the trash, you're going to keep having trash. 
It's a no-brainer. It's okay. You can do that as long as you want, but but you have no excuses any longer, basically. If you're sitting in this place, it's because you want to be here instead of over here. And in any given instant, you can have the willingness to shift this to here. Any given instant, it doesn't mean you have to stay here forever. One instant, I can make a different choice, which takes me out of the garbage and puts me into the resurrection. Okay, I'm going to read that again. Until you do so, your life is indeed wasted. Because your real life is the life of eternity. It's not the life of separation and limit. It merely reenacts the separation, the loss of power, the futile attempts of the ego at separation, and finally the crucifixion of the body or death. And a lot of times people, I think probably everybody that studied the course to some degree has come to the question of, well, I don't remember making this mistake. And there isn't anyone on the planet that remembers making this mistake. But what this is telling us, if you continue to reenact this, Every moment you continue to reenact this by staying in the ego thought system, you're repeating that same original mistake, which was, I'm in charge, God, get the hell out of the way, I got this under control. And I know that's not what it feels like when you, you know, someone attacks you and you attack them back, but that's literally what he is saying. You're reinforcing the belief system that was chosen then. So don't worry about, you know, how did this happen? Why did it happen? And why can't I remember it? What am I choosing this instant? And I'm going to read that sentence over again, because it really lays out what the effect of having chosen the separation in the ego is. It merely reenacts the separation, the loss of power. Why would I lose my power? Because I'm no longer aligned with the truth of who I am. I'm no longer aligned with that connection with God where I was created instead of what I made. The futile attempts of the ego at reparation. Well, the ego is always saying, well, you know, something happens down here. Everything's going to be okay and we'll take care of it. Never going to happen because the answer does not lie there. All right, where else? And finally, the crucifixion of the body or death, because I'm aligned with this. I believe in suffering and pain. I believe in attack and I believe in death because death was born after the choice for the separation. This is about resurrection. This is about um, eternity. No death lives here. You know, the, the dictionary of the Holy Spirit does not have the word death in it. The dictionary of the ego is born on the concept of death. So if we want to be free from all of that, this is the way home. Eternal life. Eternal life. All right. So such rep, let, let's see, such, such rep, <laughs> repetitions are endless until they are voluntarily given up. Now notice this doesn't say God's up here going, oh, you stupid idiots, what are you doing down there? Come on back home. He's saying, take as long as you need, but the end will come when you finally choose this and maintain this thought system and you don't go back to playing over here. Now, in the meantime, I promise you, we're going to do this a whole lot because we're not really... Um, I'm going to say spiritually mature enough to maintain this, this level at this time. So we will continue to go back and forth. But as I have mentioned many times, each time you go on this side and you're not feeding this side, this is increasing the bank account on, on the belief of truth. And this is diminishing the bank account of the ego. And I'm going to read that line again. Such repetitions, and again, repetitions would be the investment in the ego, are endless until they are voluntarily given up. This is a choice we each individually have to make. And as Rose so often says, when I realize the pain I'm causing myself by continuing to align with this, and I value that this is a better choice. I will continue to recycle here until that really starts to dawn on me. 
And of course, within the illusion, it's going to appear I'm an innocent victim of circumstances beyond my control. It will always look that way because it's set up to look that way. It can't not look that way, you could say. But if I get duped into believing that that is reality, I'm always going to respond from this place and believe that this is what's running the show. It's never going to change. It was not meant to change. It was meant to keep us involved in the world and recycle the world so we never go back home to the alignment of who we are. All right. <clears throat> Again, such repetitions are endless until you, they are voluntarily given up. And so that means, you know, and as many ways of looking at Christianity before, before the course is I'm going to be a good person in the world. Okay. But that's just me being pretending I'm a good person in the world. That is not me finding my way back to the truth of who I am. And again, I can appear to be a good person in the world, but if I'm a good person in the world and this thought system is still engaged, I will still be over here. So this isn't about being a nice person. That doesn't mean you don't, you know, that doesn't mean you do your best to be a good person in the world. That's not what this is saying. But if that's all you're doing, you're not really still connecting with the ultimate undoing process. Maybe a good person. Yeah, yes, exactly. Because you'll eventually realize, you know, I've been a good person all this time and I never get anything back. And the reason you're not getting it back because you're playing the part of being a good person without really aligning with what that undoing process is. Still an well, it's still an innocent victim, yes, and it's, it's yeah. right, yes, yes, and it's just again uh, just pulling you into the insanity of the illusion, and it's so good. I mean, so it, it's it, you know within the programming we've had of believing the lie, it it fits perfectly. You just keep, as he said, you know. Until then, your life is indeed wasted. It merely reenacts separation over and over and over again. And the results are always going to be the same. All right. It was, so, like, it was like as good as it gets. So well, it was, that's, yes. That's as good as it can be. I think yes. just be a good person. I read what you would like the definition. Yeah, absolutely. Of, and that's not really, no. that doesn't give you the satisfaction. No, no. And, Maria, yeah. Can I ask a question? Of course. <laughs> so, um, let's say we go back in time okay. to when COVID first hit. Okay. <clears throat> now, what we're encouraged to do is be grateful for what we have. Okay. Right? Yeah. But all we can think about is how much COVID is going to harm us. Mm -hmm. So, how do we make that transition to be grateful for what you have? I've got a roof over my head. I've got, you know, Food, I've got this, I've got that. Right. How do you how do you do that? And All right. Internally, you're not doing that. Right. You're, you're doing the exact opposite. Well, I would say first of all, as one of the lines we read said, you you can find out where you are in consciousness by looking at what's going on here. And, you know, some people when COVID hit were in terror. And I mean, probably every person in this room and let alone the rest of the world had different responses to the story of COVID, okay? Some people were terrified. Some people wouldn't go out of the house. You know, what, you know everybody had a little different take on that. But obviously it mm -hmm. um, kicked our box a little bit, you could say, to say the least, okay? Unpleasant. Unpleasant, yes. But what this is really, really, really saying is, what did we do when we were over here? We responded, we reacted, we, you know, went through our contortions, whatever they were. And how many people stayed there? Versus how many people said, well, wait a minute, this is part of the bubble. This is part of the lie. This is part of the illusion. Holy Spirit, show me the truth of this situation. And then when it pulled you back in, that you went back here. And then it pulled you back in and you came back here. And the more that you come back here, the more you are saying, Yes, my experience is, well, well, you know, and make the list of whatever your experience is. 
And this is true whether it's COVID or literally absolutely anything that occurs in your life or that will occur in your life. How quickly do I bring it back to show me who I really am instead of the insanity? Because it's not that doing that's going to make the COVID go away in your life. What it means is my mind is going to be more aligned with knowing who I really am. So I'm not going to be affected by this story nearly as much as other people would be. And as with Jesus, eventually he was completely aligned with this part of his mind and absolutely nothing that happened to the world or that was done to his body made any difference whatsoever because he knew exactly who he was. So I get racing thoughts. Of course. Like a chemical thing going on in my brain. Right. So, I know, but again, understand that's how the mind was programmed to be. Okay. I just throw it out there. Well, I know, but that's exactly how the mind of the ego was programmed to be and to react and to respond. So we can say, I'm an innocent victim of my racing thought. The course would say, no, you're not an innocent victim of your racing thoughts. You, you have the exact thoughts you want to perpetuate this illusion. So when you catch yourself there, you just take it, you know, take a deep breath. Okay, wait a minute. It's got me again. Holy Spirit, show me a different way. And there's no order of difficulties. And there is no order of difficulties. Yes. Correct. Correct. Absolutely. Yes. And, and again, we're, you know, in the world of the illusion, we have a major hierarchy. And, you know, obviously COVID, whoa, that was a biggie diggy. You know, but this is saying every, no matter what, come back to this, come back to this, come back to this. And it's boring after all. You know, who wants to come back to this? And this this has so much juice to it. And what do we do if when COVID kind of went down? What do we do? Then there's the war, and then there's this, and then there's that. There's just always going to be some something, whether it's universal through society or if it's mine specifically. It's the ego's going to say, "Okay, come on back over here." Blame it on the news. The news is false. I listen to the news, and then yeah. they're giving me up. Why are they telling me all this stuff? Yep. Yep. And, and, and the distraction. Yep. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. And that story seems to make because you, you realize home. that any, you know, everything out here. It doesn't matter if it's the news or whatever it is. Everything out here's purpose is to increase your fear. Yep. Because as long as I have fear. I'm not going to be able to think right mm -hmm. at all. Good point. And the first time I, I had COVID twice, the first time I had it, I was in a lot of fear because the narrative was going on in my mind. You know, you're going to have breathing problems, you're going to get a mm -hmm. hospital, blah, blah, blah. Guess what? Nothing happened. And, and by the end of it, I realized what made it so bad for me was not the illness itself. It was the fear of the illness. Right. So the second time it came along, I, it was like, yeah, it lasted like three days because it didn't have me. That fear did not have me anymore. So when you were in the midst of that, could you have been grateful for your house? Your it's house it's your... not about yeah. Know, this is the different kind of grateful. <laughs> out here, of course, would say that's fine, but that's so ego. Realize right. that's so ego. Okay. Gratitude from the course is, I'm grateful that I am the son of God. Right. Sometimes can catch you with what is right. Yeah. You have to get your wits about it. Give it up and keep right. just thinking about how great we are to all these little things that have nothing to do with what you what's in your mind about. You're right. trying to deflect it to what you're grateful about in the outer world. And that's just ego trying to grasp to feel better. <laughs> and that there's nothing wrong with that, but just be aware right. of that. And the other aspect of grateful is I'm grateful that I became aware that I lost my peace. You see, that's that's so powerful. <laughs> You know, that's not very, you know, ego, ego friendly, but that's powerful because the only way I know what's going on in my mind is by the effects of how I respond in the world. If I lose my peace, it's telling me I'm aligned with the ego, period. 
doesn't matter who, what, when, where, why, or what the story is. I've lost my peace, not because of COVID or anything else. I've lost my peace because I'm aligned with the ego. And now I have a recourse. I can choose again. So when Rose was in her second battle, round, right. where was she on that chart? Well, my guess she is, she, I'm, I'm right. I'm guessing she was more, you know, as she responded. And it's not that it happens. It's that it, it's how I respond to what happens. Right. And by that point, I was no, I was What's very it, yeah. conscious. The first time I was, un I was unconscious because I was in so much fear. That's what fear does. Suddenly I'm unconscious. I'm not aware of anything anymore. And it puts me down in a hole. So by the second time, I was I was aware of my thoughts and those same, same thoughts came up. You're gonna yeah. you're gonna get breathing problems, you're not you're gonna be in the hospital. And I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm, okay, thank you. <laughs> and 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 just you know, moved moved along, asked for help, moved along. And <laughs> and and it was and it was not a battle at that point. It was just like I had very mild symptoms, if they lasted about three days, and it was gone. And and for me, that that has that was because the fear didn't grip me anymore. I was not in unconscious anymore. But right. does that mean that you were closer? And I'm sorry for interrupting, no. but does that mean that you were closer to the Holy Spirit because you recognize the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit. You're aware. You're, you're close. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, this whole idea of we've been talking just a bit about the idea of the ego's job is to suck us down here. That's its job. OK, literally its job. So anytime we start to choose for this, as the course says, the ego becomes more vicious and if not malicious because its job, its survival is to keep us here. Well, you would think in this process that we finally step over here that all of a sudden everything's going to be wonderful and the angels are going to come and surround you because you did such a great job. And all that happens is more crap goes slapping in your face. Well, you made it. Yeah, somewhere. yeah. And so it's all about, okay, I'm I'm here again. Okay, show me who I am. That's, that's, the, that's the formula, I guess you could say. And watch how quickly you get sucked back in. And watch how sometimes you get sucked in and it's, you know, three weeks and you go, oh, dang, I should have, you know, I should have had a V8. I should have had a, you know, a Holy Spirit moment. Fear well, a product of loss of control. So whenever we feel a loss of control, we go into fear. <laughs> well, I, I would say that's somewhat accurate, Jason, but the bottom line is, and I gave an example a couple of weeks ago, if the oven is on and it's hot, the oven is on and it's hot. If I touch the oven, I realize it's hot, but the oven was already hot. We're all in fear all the time, unless we're choosing for the Holy Spirit. All the time. Yes, there are certain blips on that screen that, you know, kind of like pull us in and, and say, woo, this one's a biggie, but we're always in fear. And again, ultimately those blips of COVID or whatever pulls you in this time are our salvation. Because they get the attention. Okay, something's wrong here. That's a good thing to know. And we don't know that all of this is something's wrong here. Okay, so, you know, we work with the ones that really get our attention. And as we begin to work with the ones that really get our attention, and we spend more and more time here, then the subtle ones start to come in and go, oh my gosh, that's insane just as much as COVID was. But we couldn't we couldn't get to those until we kind of process through some of the honkers <laughs> because we were those ones those really draw our attention in. You know the real key is becoming aware of the reaction. The more you play with those, <laughs> the stronger you get. You just become more aware. Yes. And the awareness is just bringing it to the Holy Spirit yeah. for healing. And the healing is looking with them. That's all you do. You do absolutely nothing. Forgiveness says you're still and you quietly do nothing. You look and you wait and you don't judge. That's the key is judgment. Because we walk this earth judging everything. Ourselves and everything. If you do that enough consistently, 
you get to see the viruses as well. Yeah. Yes. Right. Amen. And again, the section we're talking about here is Jesus was dying on the cross. He was being attacked. He was called names. He was nailed to the cross. And his response was, teach only love, that's all you are. And he looked on everything and everyone through the lens of absolute pure love. Well, when I'm over here, I don't look at everything through the lens of love, guys. It's automatically a response of fear because I'm coming from a belief system where fear lives. So again, the answer isn't what do I do here? And that doesn't mean if you're inspired to get the shot, go get the shot. If you're not inspired to go get the shot, don't get the shot. Whatever, do what you feel is the right thing to do. Wash your hands a thousand times a day, whatever it is. But keep going over here because this is the roof that's getting fixed. This is the mop and the floor stuff. Okay. All right, so he goes on to say, do not make the pathetic air of clinging to the old rugged cross. What does that mean? Every time I get sucked into the world, I am in the rugged cross again. I'm an innocent victim. There's something out there that needs to be fixed so I can be okay. A lie, but that's the experience we all have. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, when you're here and you are mindless, you realize you're yes. mind, you're going to do something different. That's mm -hmm. what's going to take the ego off yep. because he needs us to be mindless. Absolutely. And in fear and in terror and an innocent victim. And justifiably, every single person in this room that's ever had an issue could get a thousand people or more lined up behind him to commit that you were right and the idiot was wrong. Every one of us. And that will continue to happen, by the way. But that's not the truth of this. And Marianne, can I ask a question? Sure. Um, hi, group. Um, so I, I always hear the, the, the kind of the reactions to the ego, non-judgment, or choose a, again, or, or things like that. Are we supposed to regard our ego with love, lovingly? Are we supposed to love the ego? Because we're supposed to, we should treat the people who embody the, the ego to us lovingly well i mean i i would say if you think of the projection and the effects that you are experiencing in the world as an indicator that i need to ask differently i should probably love this because without this i would not know what was going on in my mind now i i would say don't sit and spend a whole lot of time trying to figure out how you're going to love the ego. Just ask for help. Oh, you. You know? But literally, literally, and there's a place in the course where it says, whoever attacks me is my salvation. Why is he my salvation or it or they or them? Because that is indicating to me I'm aligned with this. Chosen what teacher you've chosen. Exactly. It's an invitation yep. to choose again. Yes. We'll say thank you. So you say thank you to this is new gratitude. To apply with love. Right. You just say thank you. Right. Yeah. And, and as Harvey said before, when you know it's the mind is still in quiet. Well, when I'm in, you know, terror mode, still in quiet, just isn't sitting around with me. You know, we're not having tea together. The fear is it's got me by the neck and it's choking me pretty hard. And so as you can you do your best to take deep breaths, to, to keep asking to see this differently, more and more things over here just aren't going to have the power and strength that they have because you've stopped giving them energy. You've put that energy over here. And I hate to use even the word energy, but we're going to go with it for now. But in literally, whichever one I'm giving more attention to is the one that's going to run the show. Unfortunately, we've given this all the attention since the Big Bang, and it's been running the show. So one more blop on the, you know, here's another one. You know, we're so addicted to that, we don't even notice it. But as you start choosing this, as the, the course has this, I think, lovely um, visual where there's a beautiful white tablecloth and it's just got so much stuff thrown on it and it's, you know, marred and dirty and probably smelly too. And so if somebody drops another crumb, big deal. 
But as that tablecloth starts to clean off and now it's pristine and white, one little tiny crumb, well, I immediately know something's not right and I can ask for help. But as I said earlier, sometimes it takes a major issue to draw our attention when the tablecloth is filthy dirty. And so we go, oh, that's a terrible, blah, blah, blah. Well, the bottom line is your whole life has been a mess. But you just got, you know, somebody opened your eyes and, oh, well, here's this one. I better take care of this one. The whole choice for the ego is insane, as Jesus keeps trying to remind us. <laughs> All yeah, right. Stop rolling out the carpet of time is pretty relevant. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I agree. History, you know, we don't really in the bubble together so yeah reading history and how things go and all this is going to happen so that idea and i think it takes a couple couple times <laughs> just a couple she, <laughs> i think rose said she was right. afraid of the pandemic and then she wasn't well she had that experience of knowing the difference between if i manipulate it or if i let the holy spirit do it how how that's going to help yeah so rose also said that Fear prevents you from, you know, thinking. Well, or prevents, thinking, it period. prevents you from going to the red dot. Sure. It prevents you from you going to the red dot. You can't be aware if you're in a lot of fear. I mean, like Marianne said, we're in fear all the time. Yeah. But when your fear level seems to be, you know, up here, that's my experience anyway. Yeah, but the, the beauty of being in fear and having a part of your mind um, remember something of the course is showing you you are rising above the battleground because in the past you were physically literally brain dead and all your your whole capacity in the world was reacting to whatever came down if if you're in the middle of a you know, any, whether it's fearful, discomfort or whatever, and a tiny, tiny bit of your mind is saying, wait, hold it. That's really representing that your mind is beginning to heal. So how do you discharge that fear? <laughs> the whole but lot of asking. <laughs> but don't you have to go to the red dot before you can ask for help? Just to ask for red help. Red Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and, and literally, even let's say you're having an argument with somebody and a thought comes in your mind because you've been coming to the course for a hundred years now that says, um, you know, hey, you know, you could drop this. Okay. And you go, wait, wait a minute. Drop it? Are you kidding? There's no way I'm going to drop this. The very fact that a part of your mind even had that reminder is huge because it means, all right, I've been investing some of my coins over here. And you could evaluate the situation and go, nah, I'm not ready to drop that, which is okay. Be honest. Right now, I'm not ready to drop that. And the more you can be honest with that, the more the next time that voice pops up, you might say, huh, you know what, maybe I will drop it this time. But honesty is so important. And, and just acknowledging where you are and go, well, I guess I'm not ready yet. Instead of, oh, I'm a bad person because good people would let that go and blah, 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 blah. Don't go there. Just simply, as, as uh, Harvey was saying, observe the situation. Become aware of what's going on. And if we really knew that why I choose to stay here as long as we do, because we, you know, we go over this week after week. And, you know, I used to talk about the idea if this was a pile of poop and this was a pile of whipped cream and you really like whipped cream, why the hell do we keep going to the poop? Because we're so addicted to it and it's still got a hold on us. And we know I can be, you know, want to give up cigarettes or whatever addiction it is. And yet, what do I do? I keep putting that dang thing in my mouth. Why? That's illogical. I could be coughing out my lungs and I'm still doing it because it's got such a hold on us. But the answer to the hold of the addiction is keep asking, keep asking, because every time you ask, this is being diminished and this is increasing. That doesn't mean the next minute I walk back here and everything is hunky-dory. Wow, look, that worked. No, keep doing this. And if it does change, I call that frosting on the cake. Enjoy the cake with frosting. But keep doing what is being asked, which is to keep asking to align with true as soon as you catch that and you remember and you're willing to do it.
All right. And Kathleen, I'm going to have you hold your question until the second half of the panel because I want to keep going a little bit more. All right. So the only message of the crucifixion is that you can overcome the cross. You can come to live here. You can come to align with Jesus where only the resurrection has anything to do with what happened. What do we do? We keep going back to, oh, but this happened. You know, how dare they crucify him? That was bad. That's horrible. Anytime, you know, literally, anytime we're not going here, we are going here. And when we're going here, we're feeding this. We're saying, I got to take care of this. The heck with that. Even if you think you're being a good, loving, wonderful person that's going to help somebody get it fixed. You're either going that way or you're going that way. No other choices. It's very simple. So watch yourself when you're going that way. When you're going that way and you can, you know, become consciously aware, take a deep breath and go, oh, wait a minute, hold on. I want to go to Florida. I don't want to go to Canada. Show me the directions to, to Florida. If you're going to the lake, is that just um, peace? Like yeah, it's the peace, yes. That's the connection with this side of your mind instead of this one. And you don't have to figure out what that's going to look like or how that's going to come down the pike. Just keep doing it. And again, is this a saying, you're either going to the crucifixion, literally, or you're going to the resurrection. Which one do you want? And if we understand when I'm choosing for the ego, when my thoughts are kill or be killed, and I continue going that direction, I'm literally saying, put me on the cross, put my brother on the cross, and yo, God, come on up here with us, because all three of us are going in whichever direction that we're choosing. Okay, and let me just real quickly show this because I don't do this too often. Literally, when we first separated from the love of God, the first thing we projected on was God. We made a God of love into a God, as the Course calls it, a God of sickness. This God has the same attributes as the separated son. He's nice sometimes, he's mean sometimes, he's going to crucify you sometimes, he's going to do, you know, put you in hell or whatever. The, the God of love, none of those live here. He's a perfect split mind. Well, he's a perfect split mind that's a projection of my perfect split mind. And then when we got tired of that, we, you know, made the whole world and then we made lots of little, you know, COVID diseases and everything else's and we projected on that too. Right, whatever it may be, yeah. So again, it's it's just part of the makeup of the belief in the separation. All right. The only message of the crucifixion is that you can overcome the cross. And again, the, mm -hmm. the last useless journey was Jesus going through the crucifixion and then the resurrection. He says, no matter what you're seeming crucifixion at any given moment, it can be undone. I did it. You can do it but we have to do what is being asked to be done. Don't try to do it on yourself because that's not going to be the answer. Until then, you are free to crucify yourself as often as you choose. And we do. Okay, and it doesn't matter if I'm crucifying me because boy, you know, who needs an enemy? We got him, he sleeps with us, he wakes up with us, he puts, you know, gets in the car with us um, all the time. We're always judging ourselves and we're then always judging our brother. And who would think that is to crucify us? You never thought of that as we're yeah, exactly. going to help them out. We're going to do this. We're going to be um, yes. you know, what we are. And But we have no concept at all that we're crucifying ourselves in the yes. process. Yes. And the default of the ego is I am the home of evil, sin, and darkness. And if you knew who I was, you would recoil as though I were a snake. That is the automatic default of the ego. And that's why rich and famous people all over the world commit suicide because they can have all this stuff they, you know, everybody would think was the things we need to be okay in the world. And in those dark moments, that belief system comes back. And all of us experience this. And that's why we keep so busy in the world because we don't want to feel that ick. But everybody has it because we live in a world of ick. 
And the ick is there. Sometimes I touch it. Sometimes I'm not aware of it, but it's always there because it is in opposition to what we are, une unequivocally in opposition to what we are. So if we start to become aware of what the effects of the choice are, and we find ourselves there, light bulb, light bulb, light bulb, I can choose differently now. And Ken would say, this is a course that helps us realize we're not brain in. This is not real. And I do have another choice anytime I choose to want to choose for it. And who's got, who's got control of the button? I do, not anybody else. No matter what other people do or say or how they act towards you, I've got the button that says I can choose to align with this. The antidote to the egg is willingness. Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. And that willingness does not require that you be perfect. That willingness requires that in this moment, I want to, you know, just check this out and see if he has a better idea than I do. And, and know that if you're not aligned with the will of God, you're aligned with your own will. And if lining up with your own will brings you something other than what you want, it's a good idea to line up with his will. Or at least, you know, Jesus even says, you know, give it a try, experiment with it. You know, you don't, can always go back over here. It's okay. But if that's not working for you anymore, maybe you might want to try this. All right. <clears throat> All right. So until you are free to, until then you are free to crucify yourself as often as you choose. And literally every moment I live over here, I'm crucifying me, my brother and God. As soon as the moment I step over here, that totally turns around. This is not the gospel I intended to offer you. In other words, he said, that's not the gift I have to offer you. You can play there as long and as much as you want. God is never going to hate you. God doesn't even know you're playing that game. But the moment you choose differently, you're going to reap the effects of that change. We have another <laughs> journey to undertake. And if you will read these lessons carefully, they will help prepare you to undertake it. So again, he's offering a new way, a different way, a way that will take you home in a way that will take you beyond the belief system of the insanity of the illusion. All right, we're going to go to text 208, paragraph 5. <coughs> All right. Do not underestimate the power of the devotion of God's son, nor the power the God he worships has over him. For he, excuse me, for he places himself at the altar of his God, whether it be the God he made or the God who created him. That is why his slavery is as complete as his freedom, for the will, for he will obey only the God he accepts. The God of crucifixion demands that he crucify and his worshipers obey. In his name, they crucify themselves, believing that the power of the Son of God is born of sacrifice and pain. The God of resurrection demands nothing, for he does not will to take away. He does not require obedience, for obedience implies submission. He would only have you learn your will and follow it, not in the spirit of sacrifice and submission, but in the gladness of freedom. All right, first line, do not underestimate the power of the devotion of God's son, nor the power the God he worships has over him. Well, what, that, what does that mean? When I align with the ego, that's my God. And that God is what I'm devoted to until I choose another choice. And again, understand the God of the ego is a made up God that is a projection of the son of God onto the character called God who is just like him. 
not the real God, not the God of absolute, pure, complete love. And that's why the, the Bible is actually, as Ken used to say, a mixed bag. Jeez, God is nice sometimes. And next time he's going to come and get you, where's that flood? You know, the whole deal. That's not the God of love. The God of love simply loves. That's it. And he doesn't even see all the insanity we're playing in because it's a dream. He knows we're not aligned with him, but he doesn't know the specifics. And again, what do I then do with my brother? The very same thing I did to God. And the whole while, the God of love, my brother who is equal to me, are right there waiting for me the moment I take the sunglasses off of this insanity and allow this answer to come forth. In regard to... I'm smarty. <laughs> All right. So which is the God that I am going to worship? And keep remembering, if it's the God of ego, the opposite attributes become my package that I ordered. Unequivocally, without my, without any, uh, you know, specific need for me as Mary Ann, this was chosen, this was just going to show up. The moment I get off the throne and let God replace the seat on the throne, I then automatically allow the love, the connection, the peace, eternity, and whatnot to become who I am. I always have to become aware, what am I choosing? Look at it this way. If I'm feeling guilt, sin, fear, death, projection, fear, suffering in any way, know that this is what's on the throne good piece of information. I can't know what's going on in my mind, mm -hmm. except by looking at the effects of the choice that is engaged. Don't like it? Send it back to Amazon and order the other package. Okay? Sounds easy, I know, but I also know you know, we're so addicted. And again, as I said, if you if addicted to cigarettes and you can say, I want to quit, I want to quit, I'm, I'm coughing and whatever. But if you're addicted to it, the addiction has control over you and pretty soon you're there. And it doesn't matter if it's drinking, smoking or shopping or whatever the heck it is, anything that's a diversion in the world that keeps me playing in the game other than going within. So... For he places himself, in other words, the son of God, at the altar of his God, whether it be the God he made or the God who created him. And be very aware, the course is extremely specific. The um, God of truth is the creation of God's. What we did when we chose to separate is what we made. It is not creation. Very different description. And again, if we look at it from here, this is what we made. This is what was created. And again, we place ourselves on the altar of whichever one of those at any given moment we are aligned with. And the results of either one of those will be the results of crucifixion or resurrection. That is why his, all right, let's see, that is why his slavery is as complete as his freedom for he will obey only the God he accepts. Well, if I've accepted the God of the ego, which all of us did, in the past, we didn't know what the effects that brought to us. Now we're starting to understand the effects of me choosing for the ego have not brought me peace and love and joy. And if that's really what I want, now I can do something about it. The God of crucifixion demands that he crucify and his worshipers obey. And what does that mean? When I align with the ego, I'm going to be attacked. And what do I do? I attack back. No brainer. It's what you do whenever somebody attacks you. And justifiably, and again, I can get a thousand people behind me to, to agree that I'm right to do that. But that will never bring you to the connection with truth. And be very aware, you know, they crucified Jesus because he wasn't playing the game. He wasn't playing the game the way everybody 
thought he should do. You know, whenever the depiction of Jesus dying, you know, whenever they went to uh, Pont he went to Pontius Pilate, Jesus didn't defend himself. What the heck's wrong with this dude? He must not really be the king of kings as they said he was. He's just a schmuck playing this silly game. Let's get rid of him. Because when you're on this team, this is your opponent. When you're on this team, that's your opponent. Very important concept to understand. If you are on the ego side, the Holy Spirit side is your uh, opponent. Because nowhere can these touch. And this is a killer be killed world. This is a separated world. All right. All right. In his name, they crucified themselves, believing that the power of the Son of God is born of sacrifice and pain. And the Course is extremely adamant about this idea, totally in opposition to the Christianity I was brought up in, that sacrifice and pain and suffering is not the answer to the undoing of the ego. You know, I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to show God how much I love him by my sacrifice. God doesn't want us to do that. God wants us to come back home, just like the prodigal son's father. He doesn't care what he did or what he thought he did. Come back home. That's all that's important. That's the only value. The God of resurrection demands nothing, for he does not will to take away. All he is is a representation of the light, that when you align with the light, you will be a representation of that light. That's it. He doesn't need you to save 500 and Hail Marys or whatever. And I'm not knocking what, you know, that's perfectly fine, whatever everybody has to do. But that's not this, this story in this course. Okay. He does not require obedience, for obedience implies submission. Well, I was thinking about that this week, you know. You can have a teacher in a classroom and all the little kids are all lined up nice and straight and they're sitting up and they're doing everything just perfect. But if that teacher walks out of the room and those kids don't know why their education is of value, they'll be taking out the spitballs and they'll be knocking people and pulling pigtails and whatever because the teacher hasn't taught them the value of what their purpose of being there is she's taught them to be good in the classroom and again much of in my opinion you know christianity was be good in the world but it had nothing to do with going back home very different storyline he would only have you learn your your will and follow it not in the spirit of sacrifice and submission but in the gladness of freedom so what's my will? My will is easy, either to perpetuate the illusion, but as I see what the effects of that illusion are, to hopefully then align with what is truth, and that won't be because I'm being a good little girl in the world. That'll be because I realize the value of choosing this far exceeds my alignment with choosing for the ego. Very different storyline. Not always easy to grasp and live, but a very, very, very different storyline. All right. It, the, only the, well, the only one I found, and you know, I studied a whole lot of stuff before I found the course. Yeah. And not that other things didn't kind of lead in some direction at times, but to me, it the unequivocal aspect of the way the course presents this is just beyond. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It is party time. No, <laughs> break time. <laughs>
Go for it. Yes. So we all know my family's not talking to me. Mm -hmm. And I got a history of my sister or my brother. It was actually my brother in law who signed it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't G I miss you or love. Mm -hmm. How about get together? It was just their name. But it was the thought. Right? Mm -hmm. And so Mary Ann suggested, <laughs> I said, I don't even know how to feel about this. And Mary Ann. Said to me, you might if I share with you. Yeah, go for it. Mary Ann said to me, they offered you the olive branch, call them and thank them. <clears throat> well, you know, that was like, are you kidding me? Um, <laughs> you know, for as much as I want to deal. So it goes along with everything I can talk to you about today, too, because here's this opportunity for me to let go of my story and actually call and hear their voice and, and say thank you. And and I can't do it. Mm -hmm. I'm so it's like the well, right. It's like it's like and if, if we're gonna look at what you've been talking about, I'm here to talk about. I'm totally over here in the ego world. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Give a call. You say thank you. I miss you. Or, you know, <laughs> but but I'm not. I can't do it. And so that to me somehow became a reflection of my relationship with God. Yes, ma'am. So, because you know, I'm running away from the love of God. For the love of <laughs> yes. Well, and, and Kathleen, I think, thank you for sharing that, but I think the beauty of that is really what we've been kind of talking about. You know, we think, okay, now I know. I, I just come over here, but I still can't come over here yet. And so what the course is saying is stay over here for now. Don't judge yourself. Don't attack yourself. Just recognize there's too much fear of choosing just this and just Stop. But don't use the excuse my parent, my family won't talk to me anymore. Okay. Don't play that card because then you're just playing over here again. Or if you do play that card, which you probably will, because most of us would, um, it, you you kind of you know, kind of smile at it a little bit. Don't take it quite so seriously. Don't make it so thick. Right, because I say I want it. I want healing. Yep. I'm going to be with God. I have the Holy Spirit. Yep. And here's an opportunity. And I can't do it. Yep. Well, it is. And yeah. if you don't know them. Because you're afraid. That's why you're afraid of what it's being done. You're being yeah. Yeah. That's it. You know, it's not what they're going to say. Peter, what's in that book? It's going to be bad news. Well, actually, I just call and say thank you. And my sister will probably be polite. Not to be polite. Not to be polite. Not to be polite. Not to be polite. Maybe we'll get together. Maybe they'll invite me over for, for Easter dinner. But the issue is not, they don't have the issue. I don't have the yes. Yeah, I need to hear I'm sorry. I need to hear, oh my God, I can't believe you did that to me. It's like, I need to hear all that. Oh, Jesus, then didn't would you then would you. No. Jesus didn't say, I need you to say I'm sorry. Jesus didn't do that. Yeah. Yes, because Jesus knew what was seemingly done to him was not done to him. We are not at a place where we accept that yet. But you know, kind of hold that up is that's where I want to get to, because that sounds like freedom to me. Even if I'm not ready to be there now, that is where I want to walk towards. And, you know, you are walking in that direction. And I know you shifted and changed, in, you know, a great deal in the last, especially the last couple of years. So just keep on keeping. And one day, this bank account will be full enough that when something like that happens, you will, of course, I would call them or whatever. And it's not even so much about calling them or not. And I think it's beautiful that you are so consciously aware it's really not about them. And that's such a huge piece of the puzzle of recognizing that's not where the problem even is. And I'm like you say, as you go through this, why it's even being clear. You get, you know, because it's so clear. It's so, a lot of things will be clear. But I still need to. Yeah. But I mean, I don't in what you're talking about. It's like this can just be beautiful to do that, but I'm okay. Yeah. And you know, I was listening to one of Ken's tapes recently and I it, you know, it just 
is mind boggling to me that I can listen to the same tape 40 times and then get to something new. And it's like, oh my gosh. And he basically talked about the idea of, you know, from the concept of the biblical concept of God that Adam and Eve left. And then when they saw God, they, you know, were embarrassed and they covered themselves up because they had shame. And in his comment was, it's, we're always blaming. He said, God Absolutely. never blamed because God knew and nothing happened. Well, I'm not there yet. And so I have to honor where I am right now. But understand the reason why God doesn't blame is because he knows unequivocally it's not real. So the, you know, the, the, I guess the prayer could be, show me that this is unequivocally not real. I, I'm not there yet. I'm still dabbling. And not to judge yourself or attack yourself, simply just become aware. And again, such a beautiful awareness that it's not them, it's something within you. That's so huge. That so huge. To me, just being aware that I don't want it is huge. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Because now, excuse the expression, you can't bullshit yourself anymore. Exactly. You can't say, God doesn't let me in heaven. You know, I've been so good. Yeah. Well, and it, 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 it brings me to the realization that I'm the one that has the key. Yes, ma'am. I don't want it. I can want it. I may not want it right now. But it's up to me. Not yes. Rogue, but, yeah. you know, the, the one mind. So uh, to me, that's huge. I can imagine the release. Yes. That's and that's awesome. beautiful, too. You got that's it. beautiful, too. Yeah. And, and, you know, the thing, the beauty of this, is you know i remember somebody had an issue with somebody in class and she said she was walking toward this person and she was going to really ream this person and and then and she had this thought of wait i don't want to do that and in that moment will come as you keep investing in the, the right answer instead of the ego and one day you know you'll either see them they'll write to you whatever some shift will occur mm -hmm. that doesn't come of Kathleen. And that's the real shift we're looking for. We're not looking for that artificial, I'm going to make nice. Or we're looking for that, I'm doing, you know, as we read here, I'm doing this because it's the right thing. It's not because I'm going to mm -hmm. sacrifice. I'm not going to show God I'm a good person. None of that is any longer attached to that storyline. Mind you want to heal. Yes. Nothing to do yes. With and anybody. yes or anything mind we can get to that place yeah you got freedom that's the fact that you have the thought it's where the healing comes from it doesn't really come from you doing anything or right. calling it comes from your thought you know and, and then my question in that is how do i do this jesus right. and the this is, is, is the this how do I do this, Jesus? And the answer is just relax. You don't do anything, and I'm here. And it's that's the comfort. Because there are people also who I've had, you know, in what family. It's, it's about a lot about family. Family that doesn't that I haven't seen in 40 years. Um, so you just go there and then the healing comes not because of what you do, but from it, it stems on your thoughts. And also <laughs> it, you know, then the phone might ring and it might be them asking saying something to you that would be the key to that thing. But you just don't know. So, you know, just your thoughts, if you have to do anything, is is, is extra. And you don't have to do it. And I think it's because there's a thread. Um, I noticed in my life, like if Marianne said that little block right there, if you step on that block, you're going to go straight to heaven and be mm -hmm. back mm -hmm. Would I choose that now? Exactly. I could be like, I don't know if I can even get up and walk over there. It, yep. it scared me. I don't yeah. know if I trust it. But, exactly. But that's the card that my sister sent me. It's yep. the same thing. Here's a, here's a peace offering. Mm -hmm. Am I willing to, to, to be scary for you? And God said, yep. Yep. And, you know, I think the beauty of this as well is wherever you are on this journey, you know, like I, I see you as, you know, reaching over here, but still being held down here kind of thing um, of you can always say, OK, Holy Spirit, I see that that will bring me the joy that you offer me. I'm not ready for that. Show me how to get there and then just stop and, and do that 
every time something like that comes up. But be gentle with yourself. Don't judge. Don't attack. Simply, all right, much like a little baby walking, learning how to walk. You know, that baby takes one step and falls down, scrapes their knee and cries for three days. Okay? That's what a baby does. Eventually, that baby gets back up and tries it again. And the same thing will happen three or four times or however many times. And one day, she'll take two steps. Woo! And eventually, you know, we all walked in this room. We didn't stop and think about what it was like to walk in this room, except for maybe Shark as she was walking. Yeah. <laughs> but that's all right. Um, um, but the bottom line is, once we do this, much like learning how to drive a car, much like learning how to walk, eventually this becomes just our natural beingness. I, I don't, I'm not, I don't have to go back and forth in the silliness any longer. But where I am is I have to start with that and slowly keep going. Yeah. I just want to say again, I saw the uh, woman next door to me today at 6.30 this morning when I walked out the door. She literally walked all the way like a demon. <laughs> like a foot on. Um, but I saw her and I did not flinch. I, I looked at her and I said, oh. and I went on my merry way. So there's no charge there. Right. Yeah. She didn't laugh. She didn't say anything. Yeah. You know, I, I, I smiled at her. Yeah. It's, 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 I yeah. think it's a beautiful thing. Well, it is a beautiful thing. And I think you can take that scenario and kind of put it next to the scenario you're experiencing with your family and know how long that conflict went on and how abusive and difficult it was. And you now know I'm in a different place with that experience that Kathleen, other than asking for help a whole lot, did not, was not responsible for shifting or changing. And it happened. And the shift was in me. Oh, always in you. So again, keep doing that shift in relationship to your family. And I would suggest, I know when you were talking about um, if you did call your sister, you had this picture of, okay, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. And she would do this and whatever. When you find yourself doing that, stop, you know, and I, I call that the jello mold experience. Cause if I walk into a situation with my jello mold, it can't be anything than what I've created my jello mold to be. If I approach that situation with an empty slate, Okay, Holy Spirit, I'm gonna, you know, make that call or when, whenever, if that's supposed to be. Um, I don't know. You fill in the space. I don't know. And anytime we fill something in that space, I'm back in charge. Get out of the way, God. I got this under control. Isn't there a lesson? You kind of envision your worst enemy. And mm -hmm. you, <laughs> yes, there is. What? What were the characteristics of that lesson? Well, I think what it suggested is you take somebody you really like and then uh, it kind of superimpose that on the person that you're having an issue with so that you get the feel of what the connection of love would look like with that individual. Yeah. When yeah. I think of Kathleen's situation, it seems to me she doesn't have to make the call. It's all in her oh. mind. Right. All she has to do right. is get to that place of non-judgment and yep. acceptance and peace with the Holy Spirit. Yep. And she may be directed to make it. it absolutely. It's not the yep. goal of the right. no. it's the mind to Absolutely, Barb. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. Yep. And and again, how beautiful that you got to see that situation on so many so many different directions and facets, but the ultimate beauty was that you became aware it was offered and I still wasn't ready to take it. That's so powerful, so, so powerful. And again, this very gentle walking towards that, but not, you know, sort of like playing uh, Mother May I, you know, somebody says, take a big jump. Well, you take a big jump and you fall on your face. That's, it's not, just do it very gently, very gently. Be aware, but take it very gently. That's how you know if it's the Holy Spirit. Right. You, if right. You're yeah. If you're comfortable, then later on. Yeah. That's yeah, of course. Really Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, if, if it upsets you, mm -hmm. you know, a totally different thing from, from the 
what happened in the world. And anything that upsets you, you're supposed to overcome it. You know, do this, right. do that. Exactly. You know, it's just about you know, being, being within and holding that space and waiting and um, thinking about it, you know, asking the Holy Spirit to help you think about it differently. Show me, yeah. show me what to do. Show me how to feel. I don't know. All right, so I'd like to read paragraph six on 208 because it really kind of puts this all into one little package here. <clears throat> yeah, there it is. Yep. <laughs> Resurrection must compel your allegiance gladly because it is the symbol of joy. Its whole compelling power lies in the fact that it represents what you want to be. Freedom to leave behind everything that hurts you and humbles you and frightens you cannot be thrust upon you, but it can be offered you through the grace of God. And you can accept it by his grace, for God is gracious to his son, accepting him without question as his own. Who then is your own? The father has given you all that is his, and he himself is yours with them. Guard them in their resurrection, for otherwise you will not awake in God, safely surrounded by what is yours forever. So the resurrection must compel your alliance gladly because it is a symbol of joy. Well, in your situation, Kathleen, right now, there's a part of you that wants it, but it's not quite to the gladly part yet. So again, he's saying, embrace that, accept that, and, and recognize that's where I am. Because as in, in, in my experiences, the more we're absolutely brutally honest with, okay, I'm not quite ready for that, and sit with that in that place, the more speedily the moment will come when, okay, yeah, why wouldn't I do that? Mm -hmm. We'll come to the surface. Its whole com compelling power lies in the fact that it represents what you want to be. And again, what do I wanna be? Do I wanna be the effect of oneness or do I wanna be the effect of the ego? You know, and you know, this, this concept of, of God, and you know, we talked about the prodigal son a couple of weeks ago. And in the story of the prodigal son, the father just said, Come on in, you know, give him the robes, give him a ring, give him food, whatever. The, the prodigal son didn't say, Well, you know, you did this and you did this and you did this, and how dare you? And why did and you need to say you are sorry to me? Okay. They didn't say that. Why? Because that wasn't who he was. He was simply love. And that was all he was. And that's all he could express. And again, the brother that left was very apprehensive of coming home. And the brother that stayed to care of dad was pissed because he was getting all the special attention. And you know, why didn't I get it? I was the good brother. So it doesn't matter which side of the game you're playing on. If you're not really coming from that place of total connection with love, there's no way you can possibly respond from a place of total love. Yeah, it's impossible. Strong and special. And he needed Absolutely. To good in the eyes of his father. Well, not only good, but gooder. Well, yes. <laughs> yeah. Better. Better, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. He, he was a pure example of. Absolutely. Special was taking the place of love. Yeah. And, and such a powerful aspect of that lesson, right. in my opinion, yeah, which was kind of like pushed under the rug a bit, but yeah, it's so vital. Yeah. yeah. Don't you think that quietness, <clears throat> quietness is, is like a, a symbol of how you're pursuing peace, like just to be quiet with it. You keep picking it all apart, and that's what the ego loves, is how you keep picking it apart. I did this, I said that, maybe I'll do this, maybe I'll do this other thing. And just to get quiet and let the peace which is true, walked over you. You know, yeah. who, who gives a rat's ass what you did? A hundred years from now, everybody's going to be under the table somewhere anyway. So you know, just give me that, that sense of, of being so angry and so worked up and that this is what the ego likes you to keep moving. Sure. And any part that you that wants to rest is not allowed because there's more thinking to do. And uh, obviously that's it, that thinking is not working either. 
Right. So I just think of how like you're, you're told like you can you can have some quietness, but you your mind you have to quiet whatever that takes to quiet your mind. You know, you, you, you have to say things in your heart, you have to say, I want this, I want to be quiet, I want that, I want I, I don't I want that. I mean if you have to say it a thousand times, and then you know that becomes true and that becomes what you're experiencing. But right. if you're too mad, you, you, yep. And that's just that's just the row you're going today. Mm -hmm. well, I think all... Jesus says that a few times in the oh, worship sure. lessons. You can't even hardly get 20 minutes yep. without your mind going. Oh, sure. Anyway. Yep. So can you just give me five? Yeah. Because yeah. that's all I need. Well, just how about one? It's right. just your willingness. Mm -hmm. Like there's no, like, the, you know, there's a card or whatever. It's a dead end. That's yep. all a yep. dead end. Oh, I got a card. Oh, I got this. Oh, I got that. Who cares? Am mm -hmm. I at peace? Mm -hmm. No. But where is that? You know, maybe to ask where you know, I just I get pretty pretty worked up myself and say, okay, Jesus, I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm here. Help yeah. me. Yeah. I'm if it says kill me, help me. But at least you're noticing. Yes. You know, oh, yeah. you just notice it. Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. It's like it's like it becomes like a uh, you know, like a um, whatever, a big block, a big uh, piece of cement banging on your head. That's what actually happens. There's no noticing it's about mm -hmm. Oh, this is really the shit. When you notice the shit, you think you think you piece of God. Yep. Right. To me, that's a bad kind of a lot of And also remember, when we're playing over here, the problem always has to land on this person. Because that's the only way I can be an innocent victim, and that's the only way I can perpetuate this thought system. So on some level, I say, as Mary Ann, I hate my perpetrators. On the level deep within that's running the show, oh, come on, show me a few more over here. I don't care what it is, bring it on. Until that moment comes where I go, wait a minute, I want to see this through your lens instead of mine. You're tired of playing the game. And, and literally, it's you're tired of playing the game. You banged your head against the wall so many times trying to be in control and doing it yourself. You just literally get to the point where it's like, whatever. What do you got for me, dude? Because I can't do this on my own. Giving up on it. No, well, yeah, you're definitely not giving up. Yeah. I can't give it up because it won't go. There's only one way to do it. It's ask for it, please. Yep. Help right. see this different. Yes. There's no, there's no getting around it. So if I could use an example today, mm -hmm. I was having a conversation with someone mm -hmm. and they had asked, how did it go with my mom yesterday? We had a little family gathering. Right. And I had to stop before I said anything and I just said it was good. Mm -hmm. So at that moment, mm -hmm. Was I on the red dot? Well, it sounds like you were leaning that direction for sure. But 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 yeah, the point is <laughs> Yeah, and and again I mean I wasn't beating right. my ego by saying right. what I really what you normally was. right, right. right. But this mm -hmm. is not exactly about denial of the experience you're having. Right. But at the same time, at that moment it was like you weren't feeding the problem. So yeah. And, and you don't have to say anything to the other person. Right. It stands right. to yourself. Yes, right? exactly. So, you know, saying it was good, it's, it's that's that's fine. That's perfect. But realize, still, you know, be aware of those thoughts of, right. what really wasn't good. <laughs> right. You know, right, right, right. That's all we I have to do. Sure. I don't want to say it was horrible. And it was good compared to what, well, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What, what was your yeah. experience? Mm -hmm. You're concerned about right. your experience. But yeah. I had to stop because my ego mm -hmm. self was yeah. going to start blurting right. out everything that right. was ever wrong. Yeah. And right. I said, no. I chose not yeah. to. Right. And, it, it, and it sounds you like. Right. And this sounds like the relationship you had with that individual on the phone was one where we did this game of we whine about mom and whoever, whatever. And there was this part of you that thought, no, not not going down that road again. They, that I don't want to put my eggs in those baskets any longer. Well, because I also know that my ego, if I were to be completely honest, then my ego would be that. Sure. You know I mean? Sure. And Absolutely. But you do need to be completely honest with yourself. Yes. Oh, right. yes, 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 yes. Yeah. 
you don't necessarily need to be honest with anybody else. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Person that I know take other people's feelings and things yeah. into consideration. So when I stopped myself and I said it was great, it was, yeah. I was being honest with myself yeah. because I was there. I experienced it, so I know what it was. Um, but I didn't, I didn't yeah. allow my ego to feed into that right. person. Right, and I would say at that moment, as I mentioned earlier, when we're fully engaged in the ego, we're brain dead. We just, you know, pu puke out whatever. That moment, there was a conscious awareness. I don't want to go down that road. Yeah. That's the gift. That's the gift. Anything yeah. that's coming after that. It's, 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 that. Yeah, that's just frosty. Wait, stop. Hold on. Yep. Time out. Yep. That's the gift. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Whether I say something to the person on the phone or not, you know, again, just be aware, mm -hmm. but that's for me, that's the gift of, oh, wait, stop. What's going on here? You stopped unrolling the carpet at home. And you're aware of being aware. Yes. And, and that's, that's really, yes. that's it right there. That's because, it. because. When you're aware of being aware, you're no longer just the character in the dream. You have risen above the battleground. And that's where we want to spend more and more time, right there. Yeah. That you yeah. have a choice. That you have a choice. You have you had a choice, you could go, you know, so that you realize the choice. We should have a game like with a red dot, like your <laughs> red dot. And <laughs> we do. Sometimes it's hard to know oh, gosh, yeah. yourself if you're still in the ego or if you're at the red dot. Yeah. And oh, definitely. Yeah. To the class, yeah. I'm still trying to yeah. quite figure. Yeah. yeah. But, but keep remembering, if there's a conscious awareness, you're already beyond being just the character. And that's that's wonderful. Yeah. All right. So the freedom to leave behind everything that hurts you and humbles you and frightens you cannot be thrust upon you, but it can be offered you through the grace of God. So nobody can force you to let this go. But every little crack of awareness where you realize, oh, that, that's just going to take me down that same old sucky mm -hmm. road that doesn't get me what I want. I'm, I want to stop the flow of that. And I like to think of it as, you know, this is what most relationships are like, two bricks that are just gnawing at each other, okay? So when one of you stops, you can't play that same game. It, it, the, the same formula is no longer in existence. And so the more we can hold to, wait, I don't want to go there. That's that's not serving me any longer. And literally it is, it's not serving me. You're not doing it because you want to be nice to your family. You're doing it because doing this is causing me pain. It's keeping me from connecting with the love of God. And, th and that's a dead end, guys. That's always a dead end. And again, we're becoming aware that's a dead end. That's fabulous information. We were not aware of that before. We thought my recourse in any situation down here when I'm aligned with my ego is I got to solve the problem here. It didn't work that way. Well, I'm going to try it again. I'm going to try it a different way in a different way in a different way. And none of them work. And none of them are going to work. But if I rise above the battleground and start observing the insanity of this, I become more and more aware that this is just not the road I want to I want to hoe anymore. This isn't the package I want to receive from Amazon any longer. It's 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 broken. It's frayed. It's you know it's not working. Especially when I have whipped cream instead of poop to be offered, <laughs> and I keep choosing that one. Is that what I want to do? You're moving away from duality. Oh yes. Into yes. yes. And again, what he's offering here, the freedom to leave behind everything that hurts you. What more could we ask for? And yet I keep banging my head against the wall because I think I have a better way um, and humbles you and frightens you. All these things will be taken away as we begin to align with who we are because none of those words are in this dictionary. It doesn't exist. That's not the effect of this choice. 
And again, he's saying it can't be, it can be offered to you, but it can't be thrown upon you because we have free will. And each one of us individually mm -hmm. has the ability to use that free will when we're ready. And when we're not ready, we're not ready. It's okay. It's still waiting for us when we are ready. And you can accept it by his grace, for God is gracious to his son, accepting him without question as to his own. And again, kind of like with um, um, Kathleen, you know, when I still hold anything as this has to be different, they need to do this, they should go, you know, what, what, whatever rules I have made up in my mind that they would have to do in order for me to be okay. Now, the interesting thing with that is, let's say you have a rule of 20 things they have to do in order for them to be worthy of your love now. You would find 21 and 22 and 23 and 24 as soon as they did all of those, because the problem doesn't really lie in what the rules are I set up. And, you know, I think you got the opportunity to see that slightly in, in the understanding of what took place there. I think you were saying to me, call her, I'll be empty for you. How much mm -hmm. do you really want it? And I just want to share one more thing. I was having coffee with a friend this morning, and and he's rich, 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 but he complains mm -hmm. all the time. Yep. So here, I don't have to go on a hike here. It's, you're a millionaire. <clears throat> what do you... Wrong. It's like he has to be in the conversation of soul, even though he's rich. And um, what I was thinking about, he, he bet on our basketball game and won $750. I'm thinking, you hear my hands constantly. And it's like, what he does, he wins money. He always has money. And I was thinking, but his goal is different than my goal. He's trying to get as much money as he can to be safe when he has money. He, he thinks. He <laughs> thinks. He can't do either. He can't forgive people either. Mm -hmm. He's just not working on that. He's just like letting it go because, in fact, he likes to make people suffer. <laughs> and it's like, Good little know, egos, too. Well, and, you know, realize that if I'm looking to make someone else suffer, look how much I'm suffering. Right. Right. So obviously money is not working for him, which yeah. it's not, it's, and it's not going to, it's a setup. Like that's, that's something <clears throat> that those of us who don't have money, that's a belief that I, I ask for a lot of help with because that thought comes up all the time. I have this amount of money. Mm -hmm. Bullshit. Bullshit. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, I just heard two very, very wealthy people talk and and somebody was saying, well, why does this guy be so cheap? He, he's a billionaire. And he says, well, people who don't have money, people who don't have money um, don't realize that the person who has the money often is coming from a point of view that says, um, I don't want to be poor no matter what. And often they have less tolerance of being poor than the people who are poor absolutely correct money and, yeah. and I, I was like it just woke me up it's a whole other point of view yes and yeah. um do i want to so i can appreciate the contrast and that's all that's being asked is to appreciate the contrast because we think we're using that person to say he being rich is sick i'm going to tell a story he's unhappy he's this or that <laughs> It's no story. It's the contrast. Just appreciate the contrast and what's right. the message for me. Right. So I'm not, what is his story? I'm not telling his story. I'm not taking his inventory. Right. I don't know anything about it, but right. I can appreciate that contrast. And it's a chord that says, um, I give you, my brother, to the Holy Spirit as part of myself. You know, that person is me. I have that same consciousness. Absolutely. I want to tap into it. I know that you will be released unless I want to use you to imprison myself. That's just such a oh, that's it. Yep, absolutely beautiful lesson yep. right there. In the name of my freedom, I choose your release because I recognize that we will be released together. Mm -hmm. and yeah, and I look at the whole encounter as oh, I see this person. I can be that person too if I want to. <laughs> yep. Well, and if you think about it, the person that has a bazillion dollars 
is still being operated by this belief system of black. And, you know, for what I would need, you know, $20 to feel rich, they would need $20 million to feel rich, richer than they do now. But the bottom line is that can't be filled with the riches that this offers because it doesn't fill it up. Either way, a $20 and a $20 million. It doesn't work. You're using yep. that as God instead yep. of <clears throat> myself. Yes, yes. Yes, exactly. And you can accept it by his grace. That is the um, the concept of offering this hurt and pain to God versus being thrust on you. And you can accept it by his grace, for God is gracious to a son, accepting him without question as his own. And what does that mean? He sees you, as I love the quote, totally, completely as love, always as love, never anything else but love. It is me that sees me in other ways. And why do I see it in other ways? Because I believe the story of the illusion of separation. I believe I am the home of evil, sin, and darkness. I don't believe I am love, no matter how many times he tells me. And how many times, you know, in our lives, if somebody tells you you love him, you go, oh, that's nice, but I want him to tell me that tomorrow. And he better call twice tomorrow to tell me he loves me still because I don't accept it as myself. Or even something as simple as a, you know, compliment. How many people just kind of like, oh, okay, well, thanks, you know, you yeah. uh, know. That's how, you know, I do believe I am the home of evil, sin, and darkness. This is really trying to help us become aware of, not to make us feel worse than we already feel, but to become aware. If if somebody looks at me funny or says something or fires me or whatever the scenario in the world may be, you know, physically show me, and I recoil it's again, I got the recoil already there. All that did was touch me and I went back into the recoiled state, but I was already recoiled because I don't remember who I am. And again, the answer to remembering who I am is not getting fed in the world. It's getting fed in the mind that reminds me of who I really am. Um, who then is your own? Is it the connection of God or is it the connection with your ego? always up to you. The father has given you all that he is and he himself is yours with him. And again, if I'm aligned with the ego, I am not going to feel that love and that connection. It is only when I drop all my stories, no matter how big or small, and I allow this to fill the space of the, the throne, then I will connect with that memory of what and who I am. And this is always available, but as long as this is on the throne, mm -hmm. I don't have access to it. I got to toss this out, say, wait, don't want that any longer. Show me who I really am. And of course, show me who my brother is, because if I don't, don't, don't ask for my brother, I'm over here thinking, oh, God, take me over here. I'm ready. I'm, I did good and leave him here because he's not worthy of my, of your love. And that's not going to cut it either. This is, none of this is real. Show me what is real. All right. Guard them in your resurrection, for otherwise you will not wake in God, safely surrounded by what is yours forever. And again, what do I want? What do I want? What do I want? And I can say, I want the love of God with my mouth. But if I'm sitting over here perpetuating this, I don't really want this. I want this. And it's what I really am in consciousness that's going to regulate this. And that's why, as especially as beginner students, we ask once or twice, we go, oh, I did what I was supposed to do. Why isn't everything in my life wonderful? Especially if sometimes it gets worse before it gets better. It's like, wait, wait, hold it a minute. I had my, my remote and it didn't work very well. And this is saying, as you keep becoming more and more diligent and serious about what it is you really want, instead of what you ordered before, eventually this will start to overrun the choice for the separation and all the attributes that come with it. And you can pretend that you have it all and that you are love and peace and joy, but if you don't feel, feel good, you're just nope. kidding yourself. Yeah. 
and you can't fool the universe. You want, you yeah. want to, I think that's what you want to do. If we're yeah. timeless, everything's just fine. Don't, right. you know, don't mess with that and all that, but um, that doesn't work. That's, yeah. I guess that's where you get really deep down inside of yourself and you have to admit that, yeah. I don't like this. I don't like it. That's that's the motivation right there. I don't like this, or this is hurting me, and I'm tired of being hurt, and I'm tired of being in pain and suffering. And keep remembering, over here, my brother and I are the same. Over here, my brother and I are different. We set it up so it appears that my brother is different. So I have a legitimate reason to hate my brother because it appears that he's doing this to me, and it's his fault that I'm suffering lie. <laughs> it is because I chose or the son of God chose to leave the connection with truth. And this is the result of that. And it's so, you know, I think there's a plate, well, there is a place in the course where it says, this is, what is the wording? Um, <laughs> it's not God proof, but what's the line before that? It's not full. It's, it's full proof, but not God. Thank you very much. Yeah. In this storyline, this is foolproof. Oh my gosh, we can, again, we can get a thousand million people behind me to prove that this is right. But I will still be in the opposition instead of the alignment with God and love. And which do I want? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense, really, but um, when you say to bring your brother over, like, I'm good here, I'm not going to be, because that really doesn't make sense. Like, how can you? Do that. If you were really good, you, your brother would be there too. Okay. Right. Well, okay. But then you're not supposed to understand that. Like no. It's, it's just no. Sort of exactly. Words. Right. But but, um, but again, if you're still holding the story of your brother being something other than love, which we all do, by the way, just just right. to you know, kind of remind you. Um. And and you think, well, I'm going to run over on the other side and be in the alignment of love and leave him over. It can't happen. Right. Yeah. I, mean, I understand right. that. But just. But it's just, yeah, it's just on the market. Yeah, within, in, yeah, within your mind, are you excluding right. someone? And, and that's where you become aware, again, what are my thoughts around this situation? But your brother, in the case of our COVID conversation earlier, is COVID. Absolutely. Yes, that we're yeah. bringing it over to the... Absolutely the correct. I Absolutely. Says, you don't love cancer, you don't love. Right. That's it. Yeah. Do anything it's everything. Else. It's my brother. Everything. It's yep. Just mm -hmm. No, so intellectually, it's yeah. Right. Experience. Yeah. Yeah. So and and right. Amazing. Yeah. And again, these concepts are like way up here, and we're kind of down here trying to climb that ladder. But but I think the course is constantly saying, yes, this is here. Yeah, you're going to have to climb that mountain. But now you know where you want to go. And as you're stepping and you're realizing where I am on this step is not the highest level I really want to go to. That motivates me to take that next step and the next step until one day, you know, no matter what happens in the world, I'm perfectly okay. Yes. Right. On dashboard. I mean, it's you know, mm -hmm. it's just it's all encompassing. Yeah. Yeah. And the more you learn about who is walking beside you, yes, the more willing you are to give it to that because you know that's the only place that's going to really you live in the oneness place. Yeah. Where you yeah, don't need to run and you don't have to worry about taking a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. And you're doing that. And right. I didn't do that. No. Um, absolutely correct. Yeah. yeah. But know that if you're over here, you can't, you absolutely can't see your brother as one. I can sit here and close my eyes and go, oh, yeah, my brother's one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, that's not going to happen. It's literally, I have to move over here. Then the effects of that choice will present themselves in a way that it's like, whoa. Yeah. And then chapter 15, it says, in the whole instance, the condition of love is met. So minds are joined without the body's interference. And where there is communication, there is peace. The lesson I was born to teach and would still and still would teach to all my brothers is that sacrifice is nowhere and love is everywhere. Absolutely. Yep. No sacrifice in this course. <laughs> you either want it or you don't want it. And if you still hold a grudge against somebody else, yourself, whatever, you, that's what you want.
and don't feel bad. Just recognize that's where I am right now and keep asking to align where you would be ready to choose that only. You pretty much just to say, you know, be in that situation on the left hand side where you go. It's got to be their fault. No, it just has to be yeah. their fault. I can't do this. I can't do this. And then you take a breath and you go, okay, Jesus, it looks really bad from here. But <laughs> it absolutely. This does not look like the other thing did. And then you just take another breath and feel more energy from that plea, that desire. And this takes work because we are addicted to kill or be killed. The natural response as a human being is you done this to me and I'm going to get you before you get me. End of story. And it's a big setup. It's a setup that keeps us stuck here. And again, it's not a thing that they've done. It's in your mind. They absolutely. Mind. Absolutely. It's such a free and more than a Piece yes. of the puzzle. If you, you know, you don't have to be there and ring them out with your nasty mouth. You just have to be with Jesus and sit there and wait and yep. ask and ask and ask and know. And then you just feel that point of time to point. You feel that, that yep. energy, that spirit is there with you. And yep. it's what you really want. You just, you know, that's the, you know, to really say, I, you know, I hate this. Like I absolutely, I think that's been one of the most freeing things in my life to say, I really don't like this at all. Yep. What am I to, you know, how do I do this, Jesus? And they haven't said, you need to do anything. Just be peaceful. And and then when it's your turn, you can talk and say, uh, excuse me, I don't like this. I wish you could do something. I mean, you don't like yelling. And you just, all of a sudden, the words come out in the right time. And you know, it's all this big chunk of, you know, of worry and whatever it is inside of your heart. Yes, and honesty at the beginning of this journey is so, so, so important. Don't walk in thinking, it's okay, I'll just push it out of the side, I can control this. And then you're doing it yourself again. There's so many ways that the ego can manipulate I'm doing it myself without even knowing I'm doing it myself. Like you don't recognize yourself no. even thinking. No. I don't recognize myself in this, and yet you don't have to. No. Because God yep. recognizes. Yep. All right. Let us uh, say our prayer then. <laughs> okay. Everybody take a nice big deep breath and let it all go. Forgive us our illusions, Father, and help us to accept our true relationship with you, in which there are no illusions and when none can ever enter. Our holiness is yours. What can there be in us that needs forgiveness when yours is perfect? The sleep of forgetfulness is only the unwillingness to remember your forgiveness and your love. Let us not wander into temptation. The temptation of the Son of God is not your will. And let us receive only what you have given and accept that this into the minds that you created and which you love. Amen. And have a wonderful Easter and try to remember uh, looking at Easter through the lens of the course instead of the lens of other ways. <laughs> have a good one.